Shad Adversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I've recently watched Battle Angel Alita, and I loved it. Like, really, it was a great movie, and I've made a whole review for you to check out if you want to know why I enjoyed it so much. But in this video, I want to talk about her sword, because yeah, there's a sword in this movie, and there's a bit that I can say on this subject. I love that she has a sword, okay, swords are awesome, and honestly, it's actually justified why there is a sword, and there's kind of more archaic weapons in this film, because guns are outlawed by the floating city above, so they either have sword, scythe things, shooty claws, or even like big fire maces and stuff. And just to interject here, towards the end of this video, I also review Alita's sword design as it is depicted in the manga. So rest assured, I don't forget the manga design and it's actually very interesting. But the sword itself is actually called the Damascus Blade, which is an interesting name because there's a lot of historical baggage that comes with that word Damascus when you hear of Damascus steel in the historical context. Uh, I have not seen any connection between the actual Damascus steel swords of history with the Damascus Blade that Alita engages and uses. And in all honesty, the subject of Damascus steel is its own video entirely, which I do want to do. I do want to make a video on that. So we'll have to wait for there where I'll go into the deep dive, but just for now, no, it's not Damascus steel. It's obviously, it's made out of a far more advanced kind of technology. I don't think it is steel. It has to be some more of an advanced kind of thing, honed to an edge of, uh, I forget what it was said in the film, but like, you know, something like a molecule thick, and it can chop through metal like butter. This is interesting because the sword actually has some greater abilities that you see later on. I won't spoil what they are. So I'm only going to focus on the blade itself, by itself, and its design, how well it should cut and stuff. And the thing that I want to point out is having an edge that sharp, okay, doesn't mean it can necessarily cut through steel. This is something that not many people understand. Even Wolverine's adamantium claws, okay, would not, like if you have a concrete pillar or a big steel, you know, bar, you wouldn't be able to chop it in two unless, unless these things were not clamped or held together. The reason being is that Alita's sword, the Damascus blade, and even Wolverine's claws have a width to them, all right? And so unless this thing that they're cutting through actually ha has nothing on the end, but even depending on how thick it is, what is more generally gonna happen is once this blade chops into it, it's gonna get wedged in because this is steel. Steel doesn't have a lot of give, okay? And for a blade that's like, you know, even four, three mils thick, okay? It still needs to force that steel apart for the blade to pass through and the friction will just hold it in place. And so no matter how sharp a super advanced sword is or anything like that, if it has a, any measure of thickness to it, it's going to get wedged and jammed in any particularly hard material that it tries to cut into. And so this is the big flaw with the Damascus blade. The way that you are able to fix this, of course, is by making the blade incredibly thin and like maybe uh, a fifth of a millimeter or something like that. I could then see, all right, you might be able to chop through metal and stuff much, much easier than how it's depicted. Now, if the metal isn't actually too thick, because with its own thickness, as soon as that blade starts to sink in, its own structure is going to wedge that blade in, but if it's thinner, okay, and there's nothing kind of jamming and holding it together, well, as soon as the blade starts to cut, one end can actually have, it has more room to move away from the blade as the blade forces the material apart, and then you can cut it in two. And it will be able to do this if it has an incredibly sharp edge, and it can retain that edge even when it comes up against something particularly hard. So what you would generally find with a real sword, even if it is like insanely sharp, and let's pretend it has like a molecule kind of sharp edge, right? as thick as a molecule, I'm saying, and you chopped into steel, well, you will bite into the steel, but that sword, it's instantly start to get blunt and then it will lose that edge very quickly to the point where the edge will not be keen to keep biting in and it'll just stop, hence why steel has a bit of problem chopping through steel. It can do it in certain circumstances when the steel is soft or it's even iron and you have a really hard blade that can retain its edge, but if it loses that keen edge, you run into trouble, and especially if it's thicker, well, good luck. So for a metal-like sword to be able to chop through steel, it actually needs to be made out of something much, much stronger than steel to retain its edge, and then it also needs to be very, very thin. Alita's sword, 
No, it doesn't have that quality. If it did, okay, we, we would be getting somewhere. So th these are my thoughts on its cutting capacity, and it honestly by itself would not be able to cut as well as shown in the film, except for the thing that Alita can do with the sword. She does something special with the sword. No spoilers, and if you want to go find out what this is, watch the movie. It's worth watching it, and if I can kind of bait you into watching it to find out how she uses the sword in a more powerful way, I'll do it because I want you to watch the movie. The thing that Alita can do with the sword actually means that it would be able to have greater success chopping through hard things like metal and so on so all right that, that that's fine but the sword is shown chopping through steel and other things like that like butter like it's nothing before this special trick is even being used with it and there are problems with the sword cutting in that specific way as I've pointed out now let's look at the design. And look, the sword, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's got a curve, it has kind of an interesting profile tapered to it and stuff like that. In that sense, yeah, it looks vicious, it looks sharp and stuff like that, but there's actually a lot of problems with this design. I mean, I'll, I'll start with the worst thing that I've certainly noticed, the handle. <laughs> handle looks a bit bulky, you don't need a handle so chunky, okay? The handle can be so much thinner and so much more ergonomic, okay, to help out. But you have this weird swell on the back end of the blade, and what? Because of that swollen shape on the back end of the handle, you cannot actually choke the handle all the way up to the hilt, because your thumb is getting in the way now, and so there's going to be like a portion of the handle right to where the guard is that you're not able to grab it and hold it properly, and this can affect a number of things, because if you're able to hold a sword closer to its point of balance, you'll get more control over the blade. Now sometimes you might not necessarily want to do that. With Viking swords, the general consensus is that you can hold the sword closer down to the pummel, right? There's not much distance between the hilt anyway, because the hilts are really small on Viking style swords, but by holding it down to the pommel, you swing it, there's a lot more momentum in that swing, and the pommel kind of acts as a hook holding it right on your, you know, your finger like that, and uh, you can get some really powerful swings. The thing is though, with a sword like Alita's, even though it shouldn't be able to cut as well as it does, it does in the movie, okay? Its cutting capacity is not a result out of mass and power in the strike, okay? It's because it's so darn sharp and the trick that Alita can do. So in that sense, it's far more beneficial for her to gain more point control over the blade and hold it closer to the point of balance, but the handle prevents that because it's, uh, it's, it's a really dumb design. I don't know what, look, if you were to reverse the grip, okay, uh, you the swelling portion will kind of come down underneath the thumb and then the hilt would be resting right underneath your pinky and you can hold it that way but the sword has a distinct curve and primary cutting edge and of course you know you can hold swords underarm but it's not good not don't do that the most effective way to hold a sword in so many circumstances is blade extending forward from the hand like that and the handle ruins it all right so those are my thoughts on the handle let's look at the blade first thing the blade has certain cut out notches right above the hilt there is no functional reason for those to be there at all. In actual fact, these would be quite detrimental to the sword's own structural strength. It's a super sci-fi material, so of course that doesn't really matter. They can get away with it. But all right, so even if it doesn't undermine the sword's own structure, why are they there? There's no functional reason, okay? There are certain swords that have gaps in them, like the sword breaker, but that's on the back of the blade, so it doesn't get in the way of the cutting portion of the blade, and that is to catch swords in. And so are these kind of weird cavities on the bottom of the blade near the hilt there to catch those? I don't think so. They're on a weird angle. I think they've only been in there for aesthetic embellishments, uh, so it strikes me as rather dumb, and uh, it hurts me because I'm I'm ripping this sword design apart quite a bit. It's actually not a very good sword design. It breaks my heart because Alita is such a good movie. Great movie, horrible sword. I'm, I'm glad there is a sword. Swords, I love swords, and you know, swords and chopping and cool stuff, and she can do a strippy thing with the sword. That's all cool. You just need a better sword. So the sword's width, okay, that's another kind of aesthetic uh, preference. It doesn't really need to be that wide, but there are examples of swords being wider. Now, the reason why you have generally a wider base on the blade, there's a number of reasons. One is when the material that you're making the sword out of was not as consistently strong as you would have liked. It helps to have a wider base of the blade, so it won't snap off down near where a lot of the force is being directed. The other thing is weight distribution, okay? Having more weight down here and having it tapered up, the general point of balance of the sword is going to be lower, giving you more point control. And so for that reason, okay, you could have a much wider base to the sword with a stronger taper, 
more point control, that's always good. Then the sword has a curve, but the thing is, this is a very, very slight curve. It's almost not even there. The curve is so minor, this isn't going to enhance its cutting capacity at all. There are swords that have a much, much more pronounced curve, like, say, the Tolwa, and that certainly helps in the cutting motion. Like, when the when one part of the blade strikes and you're following through, it then follows in with this lot, nice cutting motion, and the Tolwa uh, is known as a devastating cutting sword. This sword? No, no, no. I mean, it's, uh, the only reason why you really have a curve like this is for uh, aesthetics. Some say it helps with edge alignment, and yeah, a little bit, but if you have a properly made handle, which this sword doesn't, you can index the angle of the blade quite well because the handle of a sword should never be round. Uh, there are examples of them being round, even in history, but it's not preferable. You want a sword handle to be kind of oval or flat in some ways, so you can get an idea of where the blade is pointing from just holding the handle. It helps you index the blade. That's the terminology, I like it. Yet the handle is far more round than it is flat, and so, okay, maybe the curve will help with the edge you know, alignment a little bit because of that, but again, edge alignment isn't gonna be paying too much of an issue unless it's really off. Uh, the sword is a super cutting sword anyway, uh, and for reasons I've already gone into, it shouldn't cut as well as it does, but in the movie it does, and because it cuts so well, edge alignment not nearly as important, and so uh, you'd be able to get the edge alignment pretty good anyway without it. So I don't think there's any point for having a curve there apart from appearance. You would get far more utility and basic functionality if the blade was actually straight. It would help with thrusts and it would help a bit with reverse cutting motions as well. You can still have it single edged or have the tip curve in one way. There are certain benefits that you get with a sword being you know, have a single edge instead of a full curve, but the blade is actually double-edged. It's a curved, double-edged blade. And so you can still do good reverse cuts with the curve that is on it. It's just not the best setup for thrusting, yet still you could thrust quite well. So it's mainly aesthetic, and if you like that look, you can perfectly go with it. And because of the sword, any detriments that you mainly get out of a curve, like a slight curve, it's honestly overcome by the fact that it's a super sword anyway. So if you like the look, uh, you can go with it. The only other criticism that I could make with this sword now is its length. It's a bit short, okay? Now, Alita, she doesn't have a, like a shield or anything like that because general convention says if you're using a sword that's a bit shorter, you need something to help you close the distance, like a shield. The Roman gladius, okay, what did they use that in conjunction with? A big old shield. And if you don't have a shield, having a longer sword with reach is much more beneficial because you don't need to put yourself closer, which could then put you in more danger to strike your opponents. And you can do much broader cuts, you have more cutting ratio, and the tip speed is faster as well, and so there's a lot of benefits with having a longer sword than not, and a leader sword, it's honestly, it's a bit on the short side, especially for a two-handed sword, okay? That the length is clearly the length of many one-handed arming swords, uh, which kind of puts in the realm of the length of a katana, granted, but you could get much longer blades with the two-handed configuration like she has, if the handle was better. And there are so many advantages. Now, like with a longer blade, granted, it becomes a bit more awkward to carry, but this is the future. Have the blade recess a bit into the handle or something like that. I mean, like if you look in the anime and manga, it's actually kind of a, it's a much different kind of blade in the anime and manga, like a flick blade kind of thing. Actually, the blade doesn't appear in the anime. It's only in the manga. But anyway, different design, and I actually think it kind of folds up by the look of it. I could be wrong. Wrong, and uh, she even hooks it onto her you know, hand and uses it in a different way in the manga, but I'm just looking at the movie, and in my opinion, longer blade. Longer blade is always better than a shorter one within reason. And while I'm on the subject, I should really share my thoughts on Alita's blade as it appears in the manga. Now, as I understand it, the blade first appears in a serrate design, but then later gets reforged into the more iconic Damascus blade that looks like a kind of large flick knife. This design is honestly so much better than the one in the movie. The blade kind of widens to be a bit thicker halfway down, which would then increase the weight on that end. And because Alita has superhuman strength, additional weight isn't a problem for her, and that would increase the cutting capacity of the sword so much more. Now, I did mention that weight wasn't as much of an issue because the sword being so sharp, it would be able to cut really effective anyway. But if the blade has a certain measure of thickness, one of the ways it would be able to help push aside material for that really sharp edge to cut through would be in weight. And so in this instance, weight would actually play a very significant role to help prevent this blade getting jammed in any solid material it's trying to cut into. It's essentially a single edge 
straight blade. The tip is far more in line with any point of thrust if you do thrusts with it, which is more efficient. I just like this design so much better. It's more utilitarian, whereas the movie design was trying to go for something a bit fancier, yet undermines its function tremendously. And then you have the unique handle, which is actually, it's not like a flick blade, it's like a butterfly knife, I meant to say. And with that, it actually becomes almost like a small pole arm. Alita's sword is even shorter, yet the handle is still much longer than what you would find on a conventional sword. This would, of course, give you far more leverage in any strikes, a bit more reach if you hold it on the bottom end, and so I have no criticisms in that regard. The sword has no cross guard, but that's not really needed because Alita isn't really fighting other people with swords, but instead the manga design is just pure utility and function, and I really like it. They just ruined it with the movie design. So there we go. Unfortunately, the Damascus sword from Alita isn't that great. There's a lot to be improved, okay? I don't, aesthetically, that kind of looks pretty enough. Unless you're actually aware of conventional sword design, you know the problems with it. And because the, the handle, it just makes the handle look ugly because you know how awkward it would be to hold as a result. Ugh. So yeah, it's not, it's not that great. But I still love the movie. The movie is awesome. And please do go check it out. I highly encourage you to watch it. You'll love it. And thanks for watching. We've learned a bit more about swords and stuff like that by having a look at Alita's one. So I hope you have enjoyed and I hope to see you again. Until that time, 